Now listen, well, appropriately enough, concerning uh, uh, mothering, the mother load, who birthed this podcast idea? Or in tandem? Well, I had done a podcast with this guy, Sim Sarna, who had produced it. He has, uh, it's Cloud 10. He had originally um, produced Anna Ferris's podcast. Mm -hmm. with oh, that was, uh, and we were both on it, and uh, I did a podcast with him. It was a musical improv podcast. Um, we, only had, we only had about seven fans, but it was really fun. And then um, Constance went on 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 affairs unqualified, and then he had the idea for us to do because we were I was a new parent, and well, he saw us on social media. We were hiking. Oh, right. We were hiking together, and it was one of those things where he said, "Oh my God, you guys are friends. Uh, you should be on a show together because you're both so great and you're both so funny." And we said, "Oh, thanks so much. What kind of show?" <laughs> and he was like, "No, a podcast. I think you guys should come up with something that you want to talk about. What do you guys want to talk about?" And mm -hmm. so Missy and I were always hiking and bitching about how hard it is to be a parent and how nobody talks about how hard it is to be a parent. Yeah. And that was kind of how it came about. It's really true that there's nothing more diametrically opposed something that you love the most you've ever loved thing. Right. And it's the the hardest. Far the hardest thing ever. And it all and it just happens so fast. Yes. All of a sudden, you know, you go from being a person without a child. Yeah. You have a child and, and nothing is ever the same again. And it's you know, just constant, da, 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 da. and then you come up for air, and they're four years old, and you're like, how did that happen? But you know exactly how that happened. Four for you, Missy, and 11 for 11, you, yeah. yeah. And, Not uh, 11 kids, but an 11-year-old. No, no. <laughs> that would be, That's I wouldn't so be here. No, I wouldn't no, be you're here. The, you're the queen of svelte. We, had, we in no way <laughs> felt you had 11 children. I do remember getting home that day with my first child, though, and I don't know if you had this thinking, shouldn't there have been some licensing involved here? Or shouldn't I, shouldn't somebody have stepped in and... Yeah. Well, that checked me out because I'm alone that's now that, at the house. Right. Thinking. And like that's there. There's a, one of my favorite lines from Parenthood. That movie with Steve Martin. They talk about how you have to have a license to drive a car, but you don't have to have mm. a license no. to be a parent. And you know, it's that that driving them home in the in the seat, and you and think everybody is going to hit you, <laughs> right. and you right. can't see them, and you're like, they just gave me this pile of flesh that yeah. has a yeah. heartbeat. That and they're like, here, good luck. And you are exponentially you more vulner vulnerable for the lo as long as you Forever. live on this planet. Forever. Uh, Forever. It always blew my mind where I thought, boy, you talk about, you know, if you're out there and you imagine yourself to be egomaniacal, egocentric, egotistical, and you want to get yourself off yourself, have a kid because you're so pale, or at least to me and I think no, most yeah. parents, you pale in the overview when you think about your kid. Which is, I do think, the greatest thing about having a kid is you, it's not all about you anymore because mm -hmm. I think we are all so much about ourselves, especially through adolescence and sometimes even mm -hmm. much further than that and longer than that. Mm -hmm. So it is the greatest thing that it takes it off of you, but then it's, and then, but then it's all on you. Yes. You know. There's really a serious, uh, uh, horribly, horribly uh, threatening part of parenting when the child's in trouble or something. And I often wonder, I like that you have an anonymous confession line where yes. people might call up, have everybody can call up and say, I put them in a lime green Dago suit and we went to a pool party, everybody else was, you know, and that's right. sort of funny stuff. But there's the serious stuff, and I like that you have an anonymous confession line. Are you getting good stuff off that? Is it serving the podcast? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think people just, just to be able to say, you know, I did this thing. And, and it's for us, obviously, when we first started this, I was a little terrified because it was like people, the parenting mm -hmm. community is relatively judgmental, and there's this idea of, and there's so many different ideas of how you're supposed to do something. So the idea that you can come in and, I mean, I would like to be on, I'd like to change my voice to be on our anonymous confession. I'm sure we could do it. We do a lot of great accents on our show, so That's true. I'm sure you could pull I'm it off. Be like the person who's like my daughter was. <laughs> She'd know that in a second. I would know. I'd have to. Well, the good thing is the podcast, so I could show it on my face, but just not hear it in my voice. I think it's who's this caller? That's right. Oh my gosh, that's a crazy accent. See, you could do that. I'll do that. It's good. I I like it because it allows us to then talk about topics that might not have come up yet on our show mm -hmm. and some of them are very funny and some of them are um, dark yeah. but I like I kind of like the darkness a little bit because I do think we all need to just get stuff off our chest um, you don't want to 
I don't know, you walk around with it whether you believe it or not. You gotta just let it go. I don't know if you've been in therapy in your life, but I have, and I, I always love <laughs> I mean, that moment where uh, you go in and you, you, you had a dream or something, and you look at your shrink and you say, I, I, this, this freaked me out a lot. You tell him to dream and he'll look, it, the best moment in the world is when he looks and he goes, my 930 has not. <laughs> and you're thinking, it's the, it's the human experience. All of a sudden, you're part of the collective and you think, God, yeah. I'm not as odd as I thought. Well, I remember going to Disneyland with my daughter, um, and she was having a, you know, just her crying, like, ah, I want to get into this troll or this. So just the little things, like the transitions were hard, like moving her, putting clothes on her. And I saw, like, 20 other kids having mm -hmm. the exact same reaction, and it made me feel so much better because I was like, oh, this, is, this isn't this is just me, this is yeah. everybody. The stuff of life, right there, right in front of you. Now tell me about the rest of the format of the podcast. We, uh, I, I love the idea of the anonymous confession line. And what do you do then? Just take, uh, I guess it's tough to take phone calls on podcasts. What do you do then? Um, well, we tend to comment on the confessions as well, but we have, a, you know, every episode is either based on like the celebrity parent or the expert that's coming on. We'll pick a topic. Mm -hmm. um, mostly it's about trying to get people to talk about the things they wish they knew before they had kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then like their biggest bits of advice or uh, things they've found out along the way that aren't in books that they'd like to share. So giving people a space really, whether they're an expert or they're Mm -hmm. just a parent, you know, just, um, is um, a place where we can all learn from each other, like our mistakes as well, and mm -hmm. to not be afraid to say, this was a mistake, but I did it, I learned from it, and now I'd like to give it to you as a gem. Yes. Um, and then, so it's just, it's very casual. You know what, I think a main thing a mother would have to do, and I want to see if you agree, you, you have to, I think the more people know they can hurt you online about something more substantive, the more, brutal they'll get and mummy shaming mummy shaming I don't want to make it an infantile thing it's brutal out there and I, I see pit things all the time where people are just having fun with their kids and people wade in to brutalize them and make them feel their bad I think it's almost important to stay offline if you're going to be a mother with pictures of you and endeavors with your children what do you think I think it's a very hard time right now with social media and Instagram and uh, the infiltration of technology just already in schools, whether you want your kids to be on it or not, because mm -hmm. they're using iPads and they're using Google searches to look things up yeah, and all this kind to, of stuff. So they have to, so they're not but... Right, and so you want them to be uh, technologically aware yes. of how to use all that stuff and navigate it, but yeah, it's very hard what you want to share. It's the biggest but. It's a but where you should shout it midway through the sentence. Yes. But. But. Well, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was one kid who wanted to beat my ass for my lunch money. Now the bullies are anonymous uh, by the tens of thousands, and when they smell blood in the water, there's a feeding frenzy on your your precious child. I, I don't. Even it's know. really yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, my daughter's four, and it's it's. You know, this isn't really the question, but the idea of like how much media do you mm -hmm, even sure. put in front of them, and like the idea of I want I want to watch something, I want to play with your phone, I want to do this, and we don't really. It's such a different world. I didn't grow up with anything like that, so there's that kind of thing. And then there's also like, for me, um, even doing this with her, I thought because I adopted my daughter from birth and uh, had a, you know a really hard time having children, and mm -hmm. so there are a you know there's a she has a. a biological family that's out there it's an open adoption and it's something that I was like I just don't it's 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 is worrisome like how much do you put yourself out there you know like for other people to you know comment on or like there's this idea of like we want it to be um, obviously successful and we want to be able to help or help people give people um, a place where they can you know they can come and they can share their stories they can laugh they can bitch a little bit, um, they maybe can learn something, but the idea too is like, how will we be judged by that? You know, because we are putting mm -hmm. ourselves out there. And You know, we all have choices and there are obviously easier things that you can deal with with the family and what you have. And what we're trying to do is not judge people's choices, but to give you all the options and say, there are options for helping you get through all of it. If we all come together as a community and talk about it, 
people don't talk about their struggles with parenting. Everybody's trying to give this show that we're all doing it right and we're all perfect and look at my pictures and no, they're not filtered. They're great, we're great, everything's great. And it's like, it's okay to admit that it's hard and it's okay to admit that there's struggles and there's concerns and there's issues with everything from social media to phones to potty training. Mm -hmm. And you know, the fact that Missy's is four and mine is 11, it's great because we want to be able to cross all of those timelines um, and not just focus on yeah. the, this age. Because 11, I'm getting into, you know, teenage trauma. Now, there's phrase helicopter parenting. Obviously, that's something that is, uh, I mean, I think is detrimental. Obviously, I have an opinion about that. But the, you know, you have this amount of time with your kid, and then all of a sudden your kid's going to start going to school, if, mm. unless you homeschool your child. or, um, And then your influence, you can, is... There's that time when it's going to be other people who are influencing your kid. And I'm in that place now where my daughter goes to school for, you know, three or four hours a day and comes home with all kinds of different ideas. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That is scary. I will say, I, I mean, I'm... she does try out a lot of things. Like the the, the thing that, I, and I love it, is, you know, she'll be like, don't touch my body. I mean, that's something that they tell each other at school. Like, don't touch my body. But she takes it, you know. Right. And you're like. I She's can, sitting on right. my lap and be like, don't touch my body. I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> that is tricky. Now, you just pointed out the, the amazing right. conundrum that is parenting. Yeah. Of course, that's a thing you'd like to lay down for their safety. But they're kids. They're, they're uh, smart, but they're not wise. Exactly. And they, they just exactly. transpose it over to you. And a friend of mine said something that was so simple and so smart. She said, kids don't listen. They copy. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, that's actually so true. It's not that I've maybe said these things to her, but she's just seen somebody mm -hmm. else do it or seen me do it or her dad or whatever. And that's also just a thing that I'm like, oh, God, now I have to be aware of all of my actions all the time. Yes. Right? Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.